Please work, holy f What is wrong with this thing? Are you really a that's a issue? Hey guys, and welcome back to another Starbase video. I'm Game Advisor, and today we're gonna be talking about how to diagnose the issues with your ship. If you guys do enjoy this video, feel free to leave a like or comment down below if you have any questions that aren't covered, and I will do my absolute best to answer them for you. Thank you so much for watching, and let's get started. So if you're having an issue with your thrusters, what you're gonna wanna do is first off, check the lever and make sure it's properly named. This one's named FCU forward, it's putting out 100% power. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna check this. This one in FCU forward slot down here has 100 power, so we know it's reading what the lever's saying, so the lever is properly connected. The next thing we're gonna check is the thrusters that should be firing when it has 100% power and these are not firing. This is due to the fact that it is not properly connected in some way. There could be many different reasons that this is being caused, so we're gonna have to go into the diagnosis process now. First up is to make sure our cabling's done right. So we're gonna go ahead and jump back into the builder, and we're gonna go ahead and hold Control and select cables. I'm sorry, Alt and select cables and then Alt and select the keys. And we're gonna just quickly run through, make sure whatever cable is supposed to be connected is connected, and it is not. So that is our issue in this case. The thruster is not being read because the cable that should be connecting it to the rest of the ship is not properly connected. So let's go ahead and do that. That's gonna be our first major issue we have. So we're gonna grab our cabling tool, let's unlock everything so we can see stuff properly. We're just gonna run a whole brand new cable for the sake of this, and there we go. Okay, now let's go back into our test mode, and let's see what happens this time. Full forward thrust, nothing's happening. Okay, let's go see if it's connected now to the system and see if that's still the issue. And it is connected to the system, so we know it's now getting that. Now the next question we have is, is it getting propellant? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here, we're gonna check the propellant, and it is getting propellant. We can see that it's fueling properly. Now, is it getting power? Is the generator hooked up properly? Let's check that. So we're gonna go over here to this. We're gonna hit U on here, and that is connected properly. Now, you know what I've just realized? Is this ship doesn't have the one thing that everybody seems to manage to forget, a battery. Yes, a battery. I know it's simple. I should have said this sooner in our other videos, but I totally forgot it simply needs a battery in order to run. You only need one to make it function if you're gonna have your thrusters constantly running, but you still need a battery. So let's go ahead and bolt that sucker down. We're gonna connect in our cable, run it down here, right into the system. Now let's go back into test flight mode. Let's see what happens. I bet you this is gonna work. Boom it functions. Now another issue you can be having with your thrusters is that it might be having some problems with the actual hard point. So in order to fix this we're going to lock our machinery and hide it and we're just going to double check that we've got at least a minimum of four bolts into the beam on each hard point. This can cause a ton of issues so just be aware of that. Another thing I've seen people have issues is the hard points that are actually connected to your coolant racks do need to have power into them, I believe, in order to function properly. Don't quote me on that one. I would say I'm 95% sure, but either way, if you can, I would just give it a test real quick yourself to make sure that it is working before you move on to building more generators. Now, if your ship is just flying out of control, all you need to do is first off, make sure your levers are connected properly. Second, you're gonna make sure that your computer over here is actually named right for each thruster. Third, you're gonna check your flight control unit and make sure that you have each thing named properly. You're also going to need to make sure if you cannot drive right, that both of these are called FCU MFC I-01. If either one of these does not have that in it, it will not work properly. So that could be another thing causing you to have issues. Just note that, that if you're ever having problems, that could be a very likely case as to why your ship is not moving at all. Now, aside from all of those, 
There are a number of other things you could have. It could just be a cabling issue throughout your ship. That's one of the first things I would recommend you guys check. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna hit Alt on the cables and then Alt on the lock for the cables. And you'll be able to see all the different cables that go throughout your ship. If you move over to your cabling tool, you can even see what's connected to something and what's not connected to something. So you can follow that around and make sure that everything works properly. Do the same thing for your pipes and switch it over to your pipe tool. You can run through and make sure that all your pipes are connected if you're having any issues that way. Finally, we're gonna go ahead and just remind everybody here, please don't forget the battery. Everybody forgets batteries. Batteries are a necessary ingredient for a ship to work. Even if you're generating more power than is necessary, you must have a battery. Now, another issue you might be having is, let's just say, for some reason, your generators aren't putting out enough power. The way you can test this is you're going to need to let your ship warm up in the test mode by simply jumping into the pilot seat and you're just gonna wait a minute or two. You can check your actual generator manually if you like, if you don't have a screen for it, you're gonna let that sucker warm up. You might have a lot of thrusters and if you have a lot of thrusters, you're gonna need a lot of power. So to compensate for that, you're gonna need to let them warm up. However, some cases you still won't have enough no matter how many generators you currently already had on your ship. And in those cases, you simply just need to add more generators. There's really no way around it. I would not recommend just building a bunch of batteries. You really only need a couple unless you're using mining lasers or something like that. So just know if you are doing that, that could be your issue. Now, if you're constantly burning through fuel at an absolutely ridiculous rate, what you can do is open up your generator window and set your fuel chamber unit rate limit to a lower number. I already have mine set at 50, but by default, it will be at 100. What this does is that it causes your ship to only allow itself on that specific fuel chamber to be able to go up to a certain consumption rate of the fuel rod. This causes issues for a ton of people, so it's something to just note that can be an issue. Now, if you do want to, another thing you can do is let's say in my current setup, you have not actually named anything as a priority when it comes to these radiators and stuff like that. What you can do is you can go to coolant priority and you can, if you want to, go ahead and prioritize which coolant will be consumed first. It's the lowest first, so a zero would be first, a one would be second, and a two would be third. So if I go again back into my test mode, I look at these coolant racks, you'll notice that these coolant racks right here, it's gonna start to consume this one first before it will actually work its way through the other coolants. Just a nice little tidbit, can help you out a lot in the long haul. Now let's go ahead and test out the rest of our levers. If we go over here and we drag this one, it goes forward. All right, let's go back to the main thing. And now let's test out this one. This one should in theory make it have rotational yaw. If I put it on full, we're putting out 100. That's correct. Is it hooked up properly? Let's see if it's go ahead and connecting to our advanced little box over here. We are not connected properly. So that's our issue this time. This time the issue is, is the levers not connecting to the actual advanced flight computer. So that means we need to redo some cabling somewhere. There's been a disconnect and it looks like it's right here. Very simple problem. Easy peasy lemon squeezy problem solved. All right, now let's go back into test mode and give that a try. Yeah, there's our rotational yaw. Just kind of ripped our cable, so uh, we can't really stop it. So that's something we're gonna have to fix later on is that it has too much force, so it's actually ripping it apart. That's pretty funny, I've never had that happen, but apparently it's a thing, so just be aware it can happen. Our thrusters are just simply too powerful. So what can we do about this issue if it's ripping parts off our ship? Well, the first thing we can do is go right into here and just change the max output. We don't need it to turn that fast, so let's just bring it down to like 20%. Now let's go ahead and test that out. Again, we're gonna touch down full rotational yaw still rips off the cables so we're still having issues with those it looks like the cables are properly connected so what can we do about this issue well we can also just run a whole separate cable build some redundancy into it make sure that no matter what happens we know this thing is going to work right let's give that a try here and if it still rubs off the, off the cables, we can do one more thing. Yep, there we go. Those cables just were not attached properly for whatever reason, but that seemed to fix it. 
So that's how you can fix your issues if you're turning too quickly or if your cables or any other part of your ship are just ripping off. Now, while we're here, let's go ahead and test out all our other functions. This is our FCU ship backwards. So if I put this on full power, yep, our ship goes backwards. Now let's test this. We have also FCU ship backwards, unless that was the one I just did. We have rotational roll. Yep, it rolls and it rolls way too fast. So we are gonna turn that down. So we're gonna go into here once again. We're gonna turn our maximum roll to just 20% power. Now, there was one thing in here I wanna make sure you guys noticed. If I go ahead and turn on FCU backwards, you'll notice these thrusters on the side are firing. And there is a reason for this. This is due to a number of different things that can cause it, but primarily this is due to the fact that your ship is not balanced properly. Obviously this ship is not exactly the most amazing thing in the world. And so the reason we're having this issue is the fact that the ship is not balanced. So for an example, I have that battery there, I have the radiator there, uh, the thrusters are not perfectly aligned. All of these things are contributing to the ship not being balanced properly which is what's actually causing it to get that strange little drift. So if you're having side thrusters fire when you don't want them to fire, just know it's due to your ship's balance. Now, how do you actually fix that? Well, first things first, rip off everything that's not symmetrical. Once you've done that, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and look at your center of mass. You're gonna wanna look at your center of thrust. This is super, super important as when you see this purple square right here, this is the center of mass on your ship. Whereas my center of thrust is right here. So this is primarily meant for when I'm going forwards. Meaning if I'm going forwards and say I'm like arching downwards really hard, that means that my center of mass is probably too high or too low, which is causing the ship to move in a weird direction. You have to think of it kind of like you're moving through gel. If you go at high speeds through gel, it becomes more and more important to be perfectly balanced. Otherwise your ship is going to start to want to turn to the left, to the right, up or down. Now, if you just don't wanna deal with the issue, yes, you can just add more side thrusters on in order to compensate for that turn, for that dip, that dive, that pull up, whatever your ship is doing, you can do that. Just know it's going to consume more power in exchange and could affect your speed at least a little bit. So that might be your issue if that's what you're having. Now, something that also I've noticed that people are having trouble with is their generator overheating. So if your generators are overheating, there is a few steps we can take in order to deal with this. First up, we need to understand that if we take a generator and let's just build a tier one unit here for a second. And I just go ahead and I build as many tier one units as I want lined up like this or even if I take them up and then let's go ahead and rotate them over. If they are touching in any way, shape or form, they are going to be sharing heat. And that is not a good thing. That means instead of it generating, let's just say, I don't know the exact number, but let's just say a hundred units of heat for a single generator over here by itself, all of these generators are sharing a portion of their heat with the ones next to them. So now each one, let's say this one here, might be generating 200 heat because it's touching three additional generators. So what you want to do to deal with that heat so you don't have to have an absolute million raters an absolute million radiators and coolant racks is you're gonna go ahead and just simply separate them a very small amount. Something like that is all you really need and all of a sudden they're not sharing heat anymore or if they are, it's so minimal that it's not gonna make a big difference. So just know if you're building a big ship and you're building a bunch of generators connected to each other, that is why you're having heating problems. So go ahead and do that to help yourself out. Now, another issue I see is people getting integrity errors whenever they're driving their cargo ships and they have ore in them. Now, when you're building your ship, you can actually test this out to see what would happen if your ship was at the maximum mass. So what we're gonna do is hit add maximum mass. We're gonna hit apply to all, and it's gonna go ahead and apply that to all of the things we currently have selected. So as you can see here, all of a sudden this box just turned red. 
And the reason it turned red is because it currently has 40,000 kilograms in it. Yes, it's a lot of weight, more than most ores. But what that means is because this is happening, what you're going to need to do is go ahead and set it up so that you have more bolts in it and it has more secureness to it so that even though when it is overweight like this, that little box is not going to cause you any issues. Do make sure you go ahead and remove your mask if you want to test anything else. I always forget it when I'm in the editor, so I figured I'd let you guys know. Either way, that's all the issue is with that. So if you're having a mass issue, it's probably related to that when it comes down to you putting ore inside your crates and then them just not working properly. Now, I know there can be a lot of issues with ships when you're building them, especially when you get into the bigger sizes. So if you guys are having any issues, do feel free to comment down below and I will do my best to answer any issues I personally know how to fix. I do not know everything. I have never vouched to be a guru at this game. Just know there are a lot of them and I understand that you might be struggling with things and I will do my best to help you guys out in the comments. If you guys do know a lot about how to fix ship errors, please do us a huge favor. When you're done watching this video, go check out the comments down below and see if you can help anybody out with the issues they're facing, as I'm sure, as you personally know, this game sucks when you can't figure out what the problem is. I think it took me 40 hours just to figure out how to fix my first thruster, realizing that it could be like 10 different things causing the issue. So either way, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.